be at all. She's quite far below goal line. And um, we're starting one-on-one -on -one intervention one day a week, one, uh, once a day for uh, five days a week. That trend line then we're hoping will start to grow and if we can get her up here and stabilize it, we'll take that one-on-one -on -one intervention away and she'll go back into her regular reading group and we'll just monitor it and hope it stays above. If it falls again, we'll intervene again. So this is what I mean by using database decision. It's not the teacher feeling as though the child's not responding. It's actually objectively looking at the words read correct per minute in a one minute monitor every week. Now we're gonna look at another graph. Same thing, database decision making. How does this look? Yeah, this is a really good chart. <laughs> What's that? Kind of the reverse. Of yeah, the this is completely, yeah, exactly. I put two polar opposite uh, charts up, and then I have a bunch in between. So this kid right here, we started, she, whoop, she's a um, third grader. She started um, not in grade three reading, but in grade two reading. And she was, uh, she's our sec second year with us, and she was pretty flat last year. She didn't make as much progress as she, I thought she should have b based on her cognitive profile. So we started, She actually she got some tutoring over, uh, from one of our teachers over the summer, uh, maybe three days a week for most of the summer. And then she started the school year with some additional one-on-one -on -one tutoring during the day. And you can see this is, this is where she started, about 49, 50 words a minute. And by the end of third grade, 50th percentile, she should be reading about 110 words uh, correct per minute at the 50th percentile. So look at her. Uh, the first three weeks, she's well above trend line. This line right here, we're able to make a notation in the data, in this uh, database, that we had a change. We had an intervention in week three. That intervention was a grade level change. We went from second grade to third grade. What would you expect going up one grade? What's going to happen? Drop. She should drop. Yeah. Did she? Yeah. Yeah. But what's happening? She's yeah. So what, I, what we did now, right here, when we saw what the trend line was, at this point, we stopped the one-on-one -on -one tutoring because she's showing such a good trend line. In fact, if she were to continue on this, she's, you know, she's gonna be up, up at 200 plus. She won't, she won't stay on that line. So I, what I did was took that intervention there and I moved it to here. So we're doing this on a weekly basis, you know, making these kinds of informed decisions as to what kids need and, and how much they need of it. Does that make sense? Okay, really important but it's not often done. Are you talking the teachers Yeah. adequate support system for their classroom while they're doing Yeah, we're very fortunate here because, you know, we have such small classes, but we're actually working in a school um, down in Minneapolis. We're in a partnership with a, a literacy partnership with KIPP Academy, which is a charter school with really very high risk population, normal class sizes, and we're able to uh, structure it at KIPP so that they're getting it weekly too. It's possible to do. It takes some, a little bit of creativity in how you schedule, okay? So two very different charts, two very different um, results, but I think what's similar is, you know, looking at interventions, looking at the data, and, and making informed decisions. Okay, so this response to intervention model that's the third aspect. So the, the, the three aspects we've had so far is quality core instruction, database decision making. Now we're moving into a response to intervention model. And there are five variables within that, that model. First is the instruction itself. What, what are we using to teach reading? What's the program? Okay, the second variable is the intensity of the instruction, right? So if you have a class size of 25 in third grade, um, that has a certain intensity level, right? If you back that down to 
10 kids, that's a more intense situation because the teacher has more time per individual. What's the most intense situation you can have? One on one, right? So uh, keep that in mind, intensity. Frequency, how often is the instruction being given? Is it daily? Is it every other day? Um, and for how long is the instruction given? Now duration, there's two aspects of duration. One is how long is the reading lesson or the literacy lesson? And the second is how long, if you're intervening, like back in this chart here, if I have an intervention um, down here where I'm giving some one-on-one, -on -one, duration is also how long does that intervention have to go on? Can it go on for just a month or six weeks and then I can pull that intervention away? Or is the reading issue more complex and that, that intervention has to stay around longer? So that's duration. And then finally, the fifth variable of instruction is the teacher, him or herself. How well skilled is that teacher in imparting knowledge to the kid? Okay, so if we're looking at an RTI model, this QCI is quality core instruction, and this is all kids are at this tier. This is the instruction that everyone's getting in the classroom. If it's done well, and you're using a scientifically based reading program with a well-trained teacher, with database decision making, 80% of the kids will be positively affected and will move through the program as they should be. 80% move through, how many percent don't? What percent doesn't? 20, right? So 20% kick up into level two. Level two changes class size, smaller group, supplemental reading instruction, okay? Um, and this is where I was talking about uh, Minnesota Reading Corps. This is where Minnesota Reading Corps gets involved. Their people come in here and work in small groups um, supporting the instruction that they're getting here, but they're just getting more of it, okay? 15% of kids and tier two will respond to this additional small group instruction. That leaves 5%. This 5%, now you're moving up. These 20% here, these kids are not um, miswired. Only about 10% of them are miswired. And you have 20% here. So you're catching 15% of the kids here. The 5% who rise to tier three are the kids who are most impacted. Those are your dyslexic kids and need individualized instruction from highly trained teachers. So if we put this framework into play where you have quality core instruction, database decision making, a response to interve intervention model, um, I don't think you'll need third grade retention. What percentage of that 20% would qualify for special ed services? In a school? Yeah, yeah probably about 10%. Okay, and then I want to end tonight, I wanted to keep this to about an hour, uh, but this is uh, something that I was involved with in California in 19, I think the project started in 1997. And what we did, we, we went to a, a very small school district in California on the central coast where actually my two sons were involved. Um, actually, one, one of my sons was in this study and the other one was too old for it. But what we did was we, we went in, got a $100,000 grant from the Hewlett Packard Foundation, and it was a three-year study. And what we were gonna do is round up, there were about 450 kindergarten kids in the entire district, it was a very small district. So in September, when they first came into school, uh, we gave them an assessment um, to identify kids who we felt were at risk. What kind of an assessment do you think we gave them? in their very, very first month of school. What, what's the foundational reading skill? That I'll, phonemic, awareness. phonemic awareness. We gave them a phonemic awareness test and a letter naming test, okay? And from that, and it was very quick, it was about a 10 to 15 minute assessment. Less time if kids were really struggling, we could identify them in five minutes, right? So we pulled out about 30% of the kids and identified that they were at risk. Um, 
And what we did then was gave them a special intervention program, a phonemic uh, awareness program, and a letter naming program. And they got it three times a week for 20 minutes at a time. And there were about 20 kids in each group. And then we'd assess them again in January of that same year. Not just those kids, not the 30%, um, but we, all 450 kids were assessed again. And anybody who was in the mainstream, who we deemed at risk, would come in 